first thing we're going to be downloading is going to be WinRAR. Make sure you find your language, download that, install it. It's relatively straightforward. And once that's good, you can delete the installer. The second thing we're going to be installing is going to be the Intel DDS plugin. You may already have this, you may not. Once you click the download plugin, it is going to take you to a second page, which gives you all the information you need to install it. It can be quite tricky, but uh, as long as you take your time installing it, you will have no issues. The next thing will be a old Photoshop plugin, which has been discontinued. So we're going to need to install this. Again, very straightforward. You just select your version of Photoshop, get it installed, and that's pretty much all there is. If you have any issues, make sure to check like some Reddit forums. They're usually pretty good with this kind of stuff. The F125 FOM car template.psb, that's a bit of a mouthful. Um, it's slightly updated to the one we used before. This time we've got the car decals. That way we can then add livery design to the halo. Uh, so that way it's a bit more legible than what it was before. And then lastly, the Ego ERP Archiver for F1 2025. Save that to your desktop or downloads. We can access that shortly. And of course, if you want to support the channel, please make sure to head over to our Patreon. It makes my life so much easier and it really helps me make these videos. And uh, without it, it definitely would be a lot trickier than it is. So first thing first, let's download the SERP file which you're going to need. is going to be three downloads you will need. The first one is going to be the launcher for F1 2025. So we're going to download all three of these and put these on our desktop. So we'll start with the SERP launcher, followed up with the SERP base files for F125. You need these to be able to get it to work as well. And the last thing you'll need is the SERP for My Team mods. Now this is exclusive to just My Team content. There are other mods for all the other individual teams, but like the other two, we're gonna download this to our desktop. So now we have these three on our desktop, we're gonna go through these individually. Let's start off with the SERP launcher. We're gonna open this up and there's two things. We're gonna drag and drop the SERP launcher folder onto our desktop here and inside these we do have a little PDF readme files which are very handy when it comes to any issues you may have installing it. If the video doesn't help you these are obviously very good to use for knowledge. We're basically going to be running the same information here but just in video form. So once you put it on your desktop we're going to open up the SERP launcher. Now at first it may come up with a Windows Defender like this. It's absolutely fine. I use it. Everyone I've sent mods to also use it. So it's not an issue at all. It's good that Windows Defender does flag it but it's perfectly fine. So we're going to click run anyway and when we're in here we need to set our game directory being the first thing so if you know what your directory is perfect you can just go ahead and link it if you are unsure you can go into your library and you can then right click on a game let's take a set of course either for example if you click properties installed files and then if you click browse this will then open up the location on where your game files are saved i have them in a slightly different place and i have mine through the ea app so let's navigate to that so here for us, as we can see, we do need to do an update, which I'll take care of shortly. If you go to Manage, View Properties, and it will tell you exactly where your game is stored, and you can also open it in the folder. So in my case, obviously with mine being through the EA app, it's here. So the easiest way of doing it is if you click, if you open it up, click Copy, go back to the directory. If you hit Browse, paste in the directory you just saved, and then you click and select the, the folder. Obviously you wanna make sure that you're doing it in there exactly. So as you can see, game directory is set to EAF125, so that is good to go. So now, right now, if we were to launch the game, no mods would be installed, it would be the base game. So loading up into our card customization file, as you can see, we've got the culprit of which didn't work last time, the F175 anniversary car. And I believe it might be the Neon Fusion is delivery that ultimately gets replaced, that everyone has access to when it comes to the new SCRP mods, but yes, F175 is not a good car. So once we're back on here, we're going to open up the base files. It does have a little PDF information bar here for you, which is good. We're going to drag and drop the whole .ra into the SERP. You don't need to add a category folder. I choose not to. Um, as you can see, it's already ticked um, and it's got a little purple logo to let you know it's essentially official. So then the next thing we're going to do is create a new folder. This is going to be the name of your mod. So for my case, I'm going to call it video livery. So once we've got that created, we can now move over into the My Team template. So inside this PDF here we have at the bottom, it's going to come up with some info for us, which is helpful to what level we're going to need. It'll break down exactly what level we need. So in our case, we're only going to do the emblem and car as we're not really doing anything else in this scenario. So if you wanted to do more, you obviously can. But in our case, we are only going to do the bare bones basic. Uh, that this SERP can even offer us. So we're going to do level one 
which will be the car essentially by itself. We're not doing the emblem today. So we're going to open it and then drag the F125 folder into our mod folder. That basically creates the file structure and it includes the ERP that we need. So once we've done that, we can then delete these three files as we don't need them anymore. And we have these two on our desktop ready to go. So the one thing we will need to add to our desktop is the ERP archive we downloaded earlier. Put that on your desktop, we'll come back to that later. And let's open up Photoshop and open up the downloaded FOM PSB. Of course, Photoshop 21.2.4 is the version to be using. This is the template, as you can see, in a nice little queue. We're going to briefly go through all of the new bits. Once again, as I always say, make sure you always save these to cloud documents. So let's go through the layers on the right hand side with the tab. Obviously, we can move this freely, meaning you are using a correct version of Photoshop. Let's start with the paint. So there's two folders. We've got livery and spec map. Obviously, spec maps default to orange at the moment, but um, you can obviously change that. We can touch on that a little bit later on when we go through the final spec map for this livery. So it's very similar as, as before. It's a simple case of you can paint on this. I wouldn't recommend it aside from using it as like a guiding process on where you want to actually put your sponsors in your design. I'd recommend if you're going to draw... Um, your livery on whether that be in the 2d format or the 3d format uh, it kind of use it as a kind of use it as a baseline as you can see how uh, slow it is um, as it's as it's painting on so it's not always the best um, obviously you can select parts which you want to try and figure out go where and then kind of just use it as guides with the merge down function also uh, i'd recommend using that for guidelines just try and figure out where is what on the floor same thing again we've got spec map and base for the spec map you'd want to leave it roughly the same the only thing you'd want to add really is the sponsors which is a slightly brighter green uh, just to give that stickery effect on um, not only the floor but also on the actual spec map itself it makes life a little bit easier and um some teams do add some sponsors and some stickers on the floor uh, especially towards the rear so you can add like a little center logo there if you really wanted to but aside from that we obviously have the number two which we don't really touch on very often because of the new number system in the game all you'd really need to do is basically you know, kind of place what number you'd want in the box we're just going to draw an l for artistic purposes and then um you kind of save it you save it as you would the decals file which obviously we'll touch upon later if you wanted to do that speaking of this is obviously um the latest edition in terms of what it was compared to before halo is the main reason for this file being added to this version is so that way if you used to do the design on the old paint version uh you could not really read it it was very blurry obviously here is obviously the two points of where you would have the text roughly about here um, and then obviously the normal layers where you'd have your sponsors and stuff like that so that's the reason for that you would have to turn these layers on and off individually to get them to work but that's it we're going to cut now to the livery we're going to be installing and this is of course going to be Brendan Lee's livery that we made very recently for him in fact obviously for him to highlight through his track guides his hot laps and such but very Nice design, to be fair. I think the spec map definitely does it a lot better justice in game. Uh, we're going to briefly have a little look at that just so we can kind of dissect that a little bit. Uh, as you can see, Brendan's colours on there. And then in the spec map, we have got a vast array of colours. So to break this down a little bit better, red is glossy, so like pure paint. Uh, the dark green is kind of like it's similar to the carbon effect. It's not very stickery. As you can see with the bright green ones, if it makes sense, it's a lot uh, flatter. Um, the dark teal is more like a metallic -y satin kind of colour. And then the baby blue teal is more a bit reflective to an extent. It's a bit more, it's got a bit more sheen to it. It's, again, it took a very long time to try and figure out the balance for this. But this is obviously how, how we're running uh with the the spec map on this car obviously it changes car to car but uh, obviously this is kind of what we've got and what we've gone for obviously the um the real dark parts obviously is specifically for carbon fiber um just to kind of make it uh a little bit more realistic obviously with the amount of carbon usage on delivery and what you can kind of tell that from here but what we're going to do now is we're going to then show what we have for the rest of the car. So for the floor, the only difference really being is we've added some of Brendan's logos. As again, with the spec map, it's going to be just a slightly brighter green for the sponsors, just to make sure that they have the right finish on them for when it comes to the carbon fiber. And then for the decals, you can see it's quite a bit different here. We've got a logo. And on top of that, we've also got um, 
by the halo in the center we've got brendan's information it is inverted something to bear in mind when you're making this livery it is a bit of a pain that it's inverted and of course we've then got the main the main sponsor at the top of the halo so it's definitely a lot better that we've got a little bit more freedom where before i remember it used to be stickers um so the fact it's now consolidated into one is fine and uh, as you can see we're obviously turning off all the different layers just so that way we can see everything and then by zooming in onto the halo you can see how much more eligible the the text and the logos are on top of the halo as opposed to before so this is what we're going to be installing i know this obviously works because obviously i've sent it over to brendan and brendan started using it but for the video i figured it makes sense to use this as it's probably the most recent one and it's the one i decided to do this with in the first place so for the saving process this is where you're going to find out if you installed all the files earlier correctly. So what I mean by that is obviously if you follow the instructions when you install the Intel and the DDS plugin, you're going to find it now. So when you save the paint, you're obviously going to head to Intel DDS. If you don't see that, it's not installed. Same with the DDS one, but we'll cover that in just a second. So for the paint file, we're going to do Intel DDS. I'm going to save this as paint, color, just color, and then we're going to do sRGB. Very simple, automate maps. Uh, it's the same process for a lot of these. For the, a few years now, it's been the same. Now for the spec map, we're going to save this as DDS plus D3D. This is going to be the one that is used for spec maps specifically. There's an, another uh, in video one, which isn't very good, to be honest. So this one gives you the exact file we need, which is DXT1. We're going to call this spec map. And then you can see here, DXT1, no alpha. We're going to hit save. And this will take a while to save. But once it's done, you can then close this out. It will probably take you a while. It takes me a very long time. And then for the floor, the exact same process. We're going to do the base floor first, which is going to be with the Intel DDS plugin, color BC1 sRGB. And then once again, for the floor, and then for the floor spec map, it's going to be the same as that. It's going to be normal DDS floor spec map. After an eternity, you're finally ready to do the last one, which would be the decals. Again, if you have a number, same process applies here. So because this is going to be essentially transparent, we need to create a new alpha. So in channels, we're going to click into that tab and click the plus, which generates an alpha one channel, which is what we need. So if you head back to layers, if you hold left control and left click on the decals, it's then going to highlight them just like this. So in that way, you know it's working. Then if you click back to channels, it's going to be auto selected on the alpha channel, so we don't need to click anything else here. On the left hand side, you've also got black and white. Change it to white. For the shortcut, if you hit G and then click, it will paint it in. If that doesn't work, you can just use a paintbrush if your uh, keyboard's shortcuts aren't the same. But um, you'll need a pretty big paintbrush to do that. So once that's done, you can then click back to the uh, RGB, or you can just say from here, it makes no difference. If you just want to make sure that everything's aligned and everything saved and transferred over then bar means take as much time as you need then if you want to save as this time intel dds but instead of just normal color we're going to save it as color plus alpha then bc3 srgb with auto maps as well so that in that way that's the only difference and again it's the same process for the numbers so that's all good now that's all the texture saved we can head back to our desktop with our five new files once we have ego eop archiver we're going to navigate to our modded file and follow this all the way through until we get to the erp in here now this is where everything that you need is going to be stored it's going to be stored really simple everything you need is going to be in here so the first thing we're going to do is replace our paint file which will be this one right here and then we'll work our way down as we normally would so we need to import the decals followed up with the smap we can leave the next thing will be the floor we're going to import the floor file there, followed up with the floor spec map as well. And then the last thing we're going to import is going to be the normal spec map for the livery. Once that's done, you're all done. And as you can see, it kept DXT1, which is, which is a crucial thing with these files, which is exactly why we have that plugin. So you can hit file, save, and we can close this down as well. And you can delete the five files here as we no longer need them. So the last thing to do now is we need to make this into the modded file. So we need to right click on our modded folder. So again, in our case, it's video livery. We're going to go down to WinRAR and add to archive. You can rename this if you want. I'm just going to hit OK because the name is absolutely fine as far as what I need it to be for this video. Once that's done, it's going to generate a file at the top of your desktop. And this is your modded file. You're going to then grab this and you're then going to drag it into SERP. Again, you don't need to categorize it. And if you click tick, it's then going to activate it ready to be installed 
for when you launch the game. So you can see they're both ticked and it says here, please note, don't play multiplayer while using mods. So which is very good information to let you know and it keeps you updated. Hey guys, you've got mods installed, don't run it. If you do, don't go multiplayer. If you did want to play multiplayer, all you'd do is you'd close the game out, load this back up, untick the mod, and you'd then be able to launch and play online. But let's boot up the game, and we go jump straight into customization. We go straight to car, and as you can see, we've already got ours loaded up because we obviously had it uh, pre-installed before when we used this mod in the past. If you don't have this, which I'd expect you wouldn't, you go down to base livery, scroll all the way to the end, and as I said earlier, the Neon Fusion is here exactly as it should be. So what you can do is you can see that these colors don't do anything on here and neither do the sponsor decals. They do not affect the car in any way. The number of course, um, as I mentioned, do affect. So you can comfortably change your number all the time depending on what you want and depending on your livery. We've got a good amount of options this year in the game so we don't need to worry about necessarily making custom numbers too often as, uh, as it is how it is. But that is how simple the SERP works, guys. It's really straightforward. The longest part is, of course, making the livery. If you enjoyed, please make sure to sub, like, and subscribe. It does help me out quite a lot. If you have any issues, please feel free to drop a comment. If that doesn't work, then hit me up on Instagram, X, Patreon. Anyway, you can contact me. I'll do my best to help you as much as I can. That's been it for me, guys. Hope you enjoy the rest of your week. Take care.